Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a get ready with me look for you, which is this look that I have here today. I'm going to be showing you how to do the little messy bun and then also how to get this makeup look. So if you want to see that, keep watching. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is tame this wild hair. So um, I'm going to be using the Tresemme Instant Refresh Dry Shampoo. Just give that a good shake. And then, as with all dry shampoos, you're supposed to go spray it in at the roots. So I'm just going to make some lines and spray it in there. Remember not to hold the dry shampoo too close to your head. There we go. Now, obviously, if you have the time or if you just feel like it, you're welcome to just give your hair a good wash. But today, I'm a little bit lazy. It's really hot. And I feel like... It's just going to be a waste of time for today since my hair is mostly quite clean it's just that i slept with it in a weird looking bun so there we go let me leave that in for a few moments and um, you know the drill afterwards rub it through with your fingers and then we're going to comb it out so i'm just going to let it stay in there for a little while and uh, yes fast forward you Okay, it's been in there for a while now, so I'm just going to massage it in with my fingers and um, obviously it's quite important to do this part. If you don't, then it might leave some white residue, which is really not very attractive at all. Um, but there are also lots of dry shampoos with like a pigment in, um, so it doesn't leave the white residue if you want to try those instead. But I must say I'm quite happy with the Tresemme results, so I am sticking to it. Okay, there we go. Now I'm just going to give my hair a good comb through. There we go. And for today, I'm just going to do like a messy high bun. Um, in South Africa, it's really been quite hot recently. And I just find that works best throughout the day. Especially today, since I'm going to be cleaning around the house. And I might be popping out of the house here and there. So you want something that's workable for inside but also manageable and looking good for outside the house okay now that i've done that i'm literally just going to gather my hair if i'm looking this way by the way it's just because my mirror is there so i can actually see if what i'm showing you looks half decent there we go so just pulling that up really high into a high pony like so I'm not one of those lucky people that can just leave my hair. I can't just wash it and then go. I'm not so blessed. My hair is not curly, it's not straight. It's like this weird wavy mess in between. So it's always really important that I do something to it. But for today, uh, life is made easier because I'm pulling it all up. So that's really high, as you can see, that's really high ponytail. And I'm just taking my elastic band. I prefer to work with these elastic bands. They're tighter. I really don't like the plastic ones because they tend to damage my hair and pull out my hair. But obviously, it's up to you. And like so. Now, as you can see, it's really quite tight around my head. And today we want the messy look. So I'm just going to pull at the pony itself. Like so. And then I'm actually going to pull, if you can see there, I'm pulling at these front pieces to give it a bit of volume in the front. Okay, then you take your pony, like so. Take your pony like so, and I just twist it a bit. And then I just roll it up onto itself. And then instead of using a clip, I just pull the elastic away and put it in under that elastic. And then you're left with something sort of like that. Now you want to go back and just loosen up that messy bun. There we go. And you might take like just a minute to do this. You might take a few. You might want to really shape it. And that's all up to you. That's all up to personal preference. Now I'm just going to go in with some bobby pins. Bobby pins are my ride or die. These things I could literally not live without thanks to my wild wavy hair and um, I've just got like some different sizes and I usually use black or like this cop dark coppery color um, that usually works quite well with my hair and I'm not one of those people who really minds if you can see a bobby pin unless 
unless it's like really in the front and it might be weird but mostly I don't really mind so I'm going to take these longer ones and I'm just going to go in on the sides of the messy bun you see like there where that's coming out and I'm just going to sort of secure it in place like so and do the same thing to the other side just over here more towards the back just secure it in place and there we go so I've only used two and I'm quite happy with it like that as you can see it is quite fun and quite big and then I just go towards the back of my head so right over here and I just pull up all these loose hairs and pin them back you could leave them you could even do a little curl in them and they could look really really beautiful but um, I personally I'm a sweaty person which is quite gross but I mean I sweat if it's really hot and the last thing I want is like hairs in the nape of my neck irritating me when it's like sweltering. Okay there we go and now I'm just going to go to the front over here and fix up these little front pieces. I'm just pinning back some of the little front pieces like so. You can't really see the bobby pin or anything so it doesn't really make much of a change except my hair is now more secure and I know it's not going anywhere throughout the day. Doing the same on this side, just pulling it in, pulling more hair out as I go. And really this is all about just playing around, feeling what is right for you, because obviously each person has their own preference. Um, as you can see here I went a bit wild with my pulling out, so I'm just going to secure it to the back over here again. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And that's it for the hair really quick really easy it looks very cute very doable for all sorts of hair I mean even if you have really short hair you could do just a small little bun um, or if you want to another thing that I also like to do is use the donut you know the donut that I speak of for the buns and uh, pop that in and then make that messy you know if you don't have a lot of hair to work with and there we go that is my look for the day I've got some little pieces coming out here on the side but I think that's quite it's quite cute, softens up the look, et voila! Now before we move on to the makeup, I'm just going to show you the back of the head and just show you how really plain, simple and easy it is, but it looks quite cool. So that's the top, and then there's the back, et voila! Now we move on to makeup. For makeup today, since as I've mentioned, it is wildly hot. Um, I'm going to keep it really plain. I'm just going to focus on bronzing up the skin and making it nice and golden. And yeah, that's about it. So first thing, I usually do my eyes first because if there is fallout, then no fallout disrupts my foundation. I'm going to be using the LA Girl um, Ultra Eyeshadow Collection, which is this palette. I love, love, love their nudes palette. And um, for the, these I couldn't get for quite a while actually, but I saw them in this game the other day and I just had to get them. Uh, get it. And it looks like so on the inside, really beautiful. All those different colors and then obviously it does come with an applicator, but I usually prefer to take them out and keep them all in one place. So I'm going to go in with quite a, um, like a coppery tone today show you which one it is there we go so it is going to be this third one over here I lied it's the fourth one the third one's got a bit of a reddish too much of a reddish undertone and I'm just going to be applying that all over the lid area once again if I look away please forgive me it is just so that I don't put the eyeshadow on my nose or somewhere weird um, I'm also using, in case you were wondering, a brush from Essence, which is the eye blender, eyeshadow blender brush. Purple one looks like that. Got some really beautiful um, flower detailing and really easy to handle. And I know, yes, it is a blending brush, but it's so soft on the eyes and it's really nice to put shadows on the eyes with. So I'm just doing that and then I'm going to go in with a lighter tone which is this one right over here actually um, and I'm just going to pop that on top of that one um, these shadows are all like metallic shadows so if you're doing like a vampy look or whatever please remember to go in with your um, mattes first and build up that shadow but for me for today I'm going quite relaxed and just picking up on like a bit of, bit of a purpley tone. 
So there we go, that's all for the eyeshadows. Then I'm going to go in with my eyeliner. This one is from Essence, the Long Lasting Eye Pencil, my ride or die. Also love this one. Um, and I'm not going to be doing the waterline or anything like that because it tends to close the eyes up, especially on a hot day like today. You don't want all that fuss. I'm just going to go line it straight at the top. Obviously lining as close as possible to um, the line there and also to my lashes. And then you should end up with something like that. You see the difference? Um, I really enjoy a, a black eye, a dark eye, but I must admit when it's so hot and you are sweating a bit and you have to wear it throughout the day, sometimes it tends to look a bit messy or ratty by the end of the day, so I'm keeping it simple. I just then go in with my finger and smudge it in basically. Obviously you could use a blending brush or a pencil brush to do that, but we don't always have to complicate everything. Some things can just be done with the fingers and it works just as well. So there we go. I'm just going to do the exact same thing on the other eye. Like so. Sorry if I look really weird. I always put my one eye when I do the other eye. Creepy. And sorry about the noise. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's like a squawking bird. Squawk, squawking, squawking bird somewhere here in the region. Um, anyway, moving on with makeup. I'm going to do exactly the same thing with this eye where I just blend it a little bit. I also find that blending it, um, it looks nice throughout the day, where it's a really dark, tight line. Um, can sometimes look a bit funny toward the end of the day, especially if you've got falling shadow or something of the sort. But um, a little smudged line goes a long way. So now I'm going to go in with my Lash Princess Mascara and I'm just going to coat the top lashes, not yet the bottom lashes. I'll do those after I've applied my foundation. Don't you just love it when you get some mascara on your nose? See, now, if I had done my foundation first, this could be a catastrophe. But because I haven't, it's okay. All is good. Just going to go in and do exactly the same thing on the other side. There we go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Um, also, for just a regular day look, I prefer to do just one coat of mascara. Um, if I want a bit more dramatic effect or if I have more time on my hands, then I might go in and do two coats, maybe even three coats. But this mascara I really love and it really doesn't need several coats. It looks quite nice just like so. Next thing that I'm going to do is do my eyebrows. I do my eyebrows before my foundation and I'm not sure why, but I do. Um, I'm going to first actually go in with my Instant Pore Eraser from Maybelline and just cover my face in that so it has a bit of time to soak in. Some people prefer immediately putting foundation onto their primers. I don't. I actually um, really like doing this first, letting it soak in a little bit, so like so. Okay, then I'm gonna go in with my Catrice eyebrow set. It's got like, I've shown you this before, I'm sure. It's got like a light and a dark, and I just sort of go in between the two. Okay, all done. So now it's time for foundation. I'll be going in with my Estee Lauder Double Wear Maximum Cover. And as always, I'm mixing that with my uh, face cream, which is Youthful Glow Day Moisturizer by Ooh, so bright by Isabella Garcia. I'm just going to pop that onto the back of my hand and mix that in with the finger. You see some tools you just don't need when you have fingers. All right, there you go. Just popping it all over the chin area, going in with my little beauty blender, um, the faux beauty blender. These are available at any discam, any clicks. They're like 30 rand for one and they are actually brilliant. Um, oh, by the way, I was spraying my vitamin E mist from the body shop there. 
Um, I find when it's really hot like this, it just helps my face a bit, moisturizes the face a bit. And you'll see at the end, because I'm using that now, I actually don't go in with like a Fix Plus spray because otherwise my face will become too dewy throughout the day. Whereas with this, it just keeps like a nice, a nice balance. And yeah, just patting it in with the Beauty Blender as per usual. The one thing that I really like about the Estee Lauder foundation also is the fact that you can build it and that you can thin it out, if that makes sense, like I do with my moisturizer. Um, this gives a very natural appearance to the skin and you know some small flaws and whatnot still shine through which is quite nice but if you don't want that if you do want full coverage try using it without any moisturizer um, but do um, quote 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 your face do coat your face with um, a good primer and maybe do a bit of a fix plus afterwards just to make sure things stay in place throughout the day I've got more of an oily skin. I'm always very wary when I spray and when I don't. Um, it all depends on the function and how long lasting you want it to be and obviously the look that you want to go for. Just patting it in all over the face, like so. Tell me, are any other um, people out there annoyed with the patting like I am not annoyed with the patting in the sense of I'm just gonna stop doing it just like it, like so much of patting oh <sighs> it makes my arm oh, and my hand tired at the same time I'd much rather use the patting than a brush because I feel like I can apply it um, much better with a beauty blender um, type of sponge than I could with a brush um, with a brush even when I really take my time I do find that sometimes you get some fine lines um, whereas with this you just really don't it all just blends into the skin sort of seamlessly just taking my time around these them eyes there we go and I'll just go back with what's left and sort of cover up the little imperfections I've been having uh, a problem with a little spot over here that has not been wanting to go away for a while now who knows why who knows I think it's just something that we people deal with. Sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. And then here above the eye, I also have just one little spot that likes to visit. Okay, there we go. And foundation is done. Not very thick coat, lovely for summertime. I'm going to now go in with my Max Studio Fix Powder and my fluffy brush from Checkers. Yes, Checkers sells fluffy brushes, and this one is brilliant, I won't lie. It's really, really good. Mm-hmm, getting into the neck there. Um, instead of like doing a brush motion, I prefer to just pat the powder on. Otherwise, if it is a brush motion, sometimes you mess up that foundation a bit, or you might get a bit of streakiness which I don't get at all with this. Now obviously you could go in and do, um, before you do your foundation, you could do a concealer under the eyes, a brightener, you could do a powder for that, like a very light powder, maybe a translucent powder, but it's not every day that you have the time to do all of that, or the want to do all of that. And um, you could also actually just do, use a concealer, especially in the heat, and just do a little bit of powder over that if it suits you. For me, this is my go-to every day, but you know, to each their own, and you choose what works for you. So there we go, my powder is done. These eyes are quite purple when I see them up close, I'll zoom you in in a bit. Then I'm going to go in with my Max Factor bronzing powder. And another little brush I got from Essence ages ago, it's like a little contour brush. And we're just going to go into our usual contouring spots. So obviously your the cheekbones are very important. What I really love about this bronzing powder is it's very pigmented, but it's not muddy. It doesn't give you that sort of a dirty face, um, which some uh, contour colors and some bronzers can do. Um, I just really don't like that very much. 
Um, also, I don't always want to do a cream contour or just a contour color and then go over it with bronzer. I actually prefer to use my bronzer as a contour color. And then you're going to go over the top of the ears. You start at the temples, just patting it in around the hairline. This gives the face a natural glow. And also over here at the bottom, I was just contouring out those cheekbones. Now, what I like to do after this is go in with my big fluffy brush and just blend and just smooth it out a little bit so you don't have such harsh lines. So I'll go over wherever I've applied the bronzer, like so. And you still have that sculpted contour look that's not so harsh. Great. Next thing is the MAC um, It's Soft and Gentle favorite. Recently purchased my mom a Soft and Gentle and also purchased my sister a Soft and Gentle because they were just loving it that much. Um, I'm just going to do this on top of the cheekbones using it as a highlighter. Um, day to day basis I don't really use a blusher unless I really really feel like it. I actually prefer to go with this and just do a really bronzed highlighted face. For me it also gives like a youthful appearance which is really nice. I'm just going to check that both sides are even. And then obviously here about the forehead, down the nose ever so slightly. If you do down, do, do down the nose ever so slightly, you also actually get away with um, not highlighting or contouring the nose um, with uh, a, a, like a matte how can I say, with like a matte contour or a cream contour, if you just use this highlighter and go straight down the nose, then it already gives that thinning effect and makes it seem quite ladylike, which a lot of people do get through doing quite a harsh contour. You just basically want to pop that wherever the light would hit your face. I'm going to go in with my little essence brush once again and just pick up a little bit of the shadow and pop that right under my uh, eyebrow bone. Just bringing it across like that. Okay, perfect. And then just gonna blend the shadow a bit. Very good. Last thing to do today is lips. So let's do lips quickly. Lips, I'm going to be lining and filling in with MAC Saw, which is one of my favorites lately. So I'm just going to skip you through this process. There we go, lips all lined. You can see it already makes quite a difference to the face. And then I'm going to be popping on um, this, it's a long lasting lip gloss from Essence, but it is the matte, so it's matte, which is awesome and it is an 06 soft nude so I'm just going to be popping that on these colors are super super close to one another and this is a great dupe for uh, the saw color actually I would say obviously not as long lasting but really beautiful nonetheless and oh, there we go the makeup look and the hair look for the day is done and um, I'm just going to finish off this look with some earrings that match my watch um, like that. I'm going to rose gold and black and it says whatever I'm late anyway which if you know me you know is the truth. Now I've just got some earrings that sort of go with that. they black and the rose gold. There we go. I also think earrings are quite a fun way to make any look a bit smarter, a bit fancier. So there we go. Just popping them in. And that is the finished look. I hope you liked it. If you did, please, please, please subscribe to my channel, give the video a big thumbs up, and I will see you soon. Bye.